Hey everybody, my name is Jay Tanner, and welcome to the channel. And today I thought I would talk about She-Hulk, along with a pretty nasty trend that I've noticed in comic books, and I'm sure many others have noticed it too. I wasn't originally planning on covering this topic, but with them taking a break from YouTube, our planned content was thrown off schedule anyway, so I figured I might as well take a look at it. Avengers number 20 is a tie-in to the War of the Realms event. Despite the fact this is supposed to be a team-up book, it feels more like a solo She-Hulk story, which makes the cover misleading. This book makes it very clear that Marvel wants to take the character in a new direction and are willing to trash her previous characterization to do so, as well as the merit of the previous writers and artists who worked on those books, which is a real shame. Wanting to take a character in a new direction is one thing. It is Marvel's character, they can do what they want with her, but this just seems spiteful and entitled. Kind of like a fan fiction that they're forcing you to accept as canon. But the truth is this just isn't She-Hulk, and I don't think they want it to be. Maybe they think this version is more empowering? But honestly, in my opinion, it comes off as more hostile and talking down to the reader. The book deals with Jennifer trying to come to terms with her new appearance and abilities, and her accepting herself as ugly. Jennifer got new powers from the Celestials. This caused a pretty drastic change in her appearance in her Hulk form. Now instead of a female bodybuilder looking character, it's a very masculine and pretty brutish appearance. But it's not just her physical appearance that's changed. Unlike Bruce who lost his cognitive abilities in his Hulk form, Jennifer was able to retain those abilities and even kept her job as a lawyer while she was in her Hulk form. Unlike most superheroes, Jennifer actually enjoyed having her abilities, but now this more brutish character can't form complete sentences and is much more animalistic than she was usually portrayed as. She does seem to have full control over her mind as there are panels where she's able to think clearly and rationalize, but she only speaks in a few words at a time, and Avengers 20 basically hammers in the fact that this Hulk is here to stay, and if anybody has a problem with that, then they can deal with it. Even though for all intents and purposes, this just isn't She-Hulk. But the comic has this very mean-spirited attitude towards the whole situation, and this attitude seems to be an unfortunate trend in comic books these days, where comic book writers address criticism in a very unproductive way. We've seen this attitude before, in Harley Quinn 56, another book that we reviewed on this channel. In that book, Animal Rescue was used as a thinly veiled allegory for the comic book industry, and critics of the industry were portrayed as an unruly mob of thugs. That book ended with this gem of a line claiming that the critics are worse than evil, they're nostalgic. The whole thing just came off as creepy and deranged, like this whole thing was just a power fantasy on behalf of the writer who could use it as a way to cope with the criticism that he didn't want to receive. The comic shows the characters violently attacking this mob of critics, including mutilation and murder. And we see the same thing in Avengers 20. I get that criticism can be kind of hard to swallow sometimes, but this is just going too far. But it also has this added feminism and powering women angle that just kind of makes it even more insulting. At least to me personally. I can't speak for anyone other than myself, and in this case my sister who unfortunately can't be with us right now. But I honestly don't find this take on She-Hulk to be empowering at all. But the comic starts with Jen in a simulation to try to help control her self-loathing and anger issues. The simulation has Jennifer as a judge, while the new She-Hulk is on trial and being prosecuted by the old She-Hulk. They bring up everything that She-Hulk had been known for and also loved for, which they do multiple times throughout the comic. How she was charming and witty, how she broke the fourth wall before Deadpool ever came into the picture. In fact, later in the comic, Deadpool shows shows up to ask Jen what her deal is, because throughout the entire comic they insist that she's a stick in the mud. They even give her a shirt that says no fun on it. The writer, and I'm specifying that it's the writer because I genuinely don't think this is in character for Jen, insists that this way she's free, free to be ugly, and free of the harassment that she used to receive as the beautiful glamorous She-Hulk. And then the comic ironically contradicts that sentiment, which is pretty weird. But during the War of the Realms, Australia has taken over over by a group of trolls. Jen reflects on her life as a superhero, saying how everybody loved her as She-Hulk and she actually really enjoyed it too, which is rare in her line of work. But then she says that she doesn't miss that about being She-Hulk and that she prefers what she is now. This is why I was saying that this doesn't feel like it's in character for Jen, and it feels more like the writer just didn't like the way that she was originally portrayed so he wants to change it to fit his own sensibilities. She says these trolls would probably make fun of the old She-Hulk, they would laugh at 
her and make crude jokes. But now that she's ugly, no one is laughing at her or making mean jokes about it. But then literally four pages later, the Troll King snickers and sarcastically asks her to marry him. So people are still laughing at her and are still making crass jokes to her. She then makes a statement of how the defense rests, ladies of the jury. Well, this lady's not convinced. All this does is make Jen look extremely insecure and unable to cope with reality. Apparently, it's common for Jen to punch herself while she's meditating. This all points to a very serious self-loathing problem that I don't think she's getting the proper treatment for, despite Black Panther's best efforts. And this free-to-be-ugly coping mechanism is not healthy either. Here, Jen's character is defined by this insecurity. It consumes her thoughts and is affecting her relationships. She's putting so much emphasis on her outer appearance that she isn't seeing what's really going on. For example, there's a scene where she's talking to Daredevil about War of the Realms. You know, that big event they're in the middle of. But instead, all she's thinking about is that one time Bruce said he was jealous of her and how offended that made her. Of course, being the Hulk has had very serious effects on Bruce's life, causing him to lose his mind and not be aware of his surroundings, while also completely destroying everything in his past. This results in him hurting people People that he never intended to, and waking up with no memory of what happened, not knowing what kind of damage he caused and who he hurt. Meanwhile, Jen is able to live a normal life, hold a career, and be adored by everyone while the Hulk is hated and feared. But instead of showing compassion and empathy for her own cousin, Jen is so callous and selfish that she wished she could punch Bruce just for saying that. She claims that she would rather be a giant monster that everyone's afraid of. That way the paparazzi will leave her alone and people will Will stop harassing her in battle. But who does she think she's fooling, really? We just came off of a battle where a troll was totally hitting on her. Of course the Hulk would have problems with the press. He's a giant monster who's constantly being hunted. And this comic already proved that just because she's ugly now doesn't mean she's not going to get negative and unwanted attention. But now she's not going to get any of the positive attention that she relished before. It's true there's a lot of rude people out there, but now she's giving them control over her life and well-being. And that's honestly really sad. I can't believe this is a mainstream Marvel book, yet it has a complete and total misunderstanding of these characters. Not to mention, what kind of message is this sending? First, there's Jen with her, don't make me feel invalidated. You won't like me if I feel invalidated line. That's an actual line in this comic. But then there's also this really nasty portrayal of their critics. In this book, the Troll King spouts rhetoric that we commonly hear when people question the idea of lady Thor. That Thor is not some kind of legacy or powers that gets passed down, it's an actual identity that originated in the Norse myth, and then She-Hulk destroys her hammer, beating him with it. So basically, anyone who dares questions the status quo of the comic book industry will be written in as a bad guy and be terribly brutalized just for the sick pleasure of the writer? What great customer service. They are trolls, so they're probably some kind of stand-in for what they believe are internet trolls. Just like Harley Quinn 56's unruly mob metaphor. It's all such a shame, really. The old portrayal of She-Hulk was way more empowering and inspiring than this version. She comes off as so sad and insecure and in desperate need of serious help. And these writers come off as extremely immature, who can't stand any dissenting opinions about their work. Maybe if they had approached these topics with more nuance and actual respect for them. It's true that trying to attain beauty can lead to some harmful results, but this is the opposite extreme, and that can be just as harmful. But they could have used this as an opportunity to talk about how we see beauty, since that was basically the center of She-Hulk's inner conflict. For example, social media has a big impact on people. Oftentimes, people will try to recreate what they see on social media because they believe that that's beautiful. The problem is these photos have been so altered and photoshopped that it's impossible to obtain these looks in reality. Maybe they could have done a story where people were trying to emulate She-Hulk's look. She's known for being beautiful and confident, so it's easy to see why people would try to recreate that. But maybe the message of the story could have been about accepting yourself, or something along those lines. That seems to be the kind of message they were trying to go for in this book, but in reality, she's not accepting herself at all. She's using ugliness as a shield to try to protect herself from the world, but the world hasn't changed. Now she's worse off. It's self-destructive. But they're trying to pass this off as empowering and that can send a very dangerous message. And anyone who has a problem with this is just seen as a bad guy. It's a real shame that this is what the comic book industry has become.
come with this destructive status quo. But that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? Do you think any good can come from this new She-Hulk? Which She-Hulk do you prefer? Sensational She-Hulk or Savage She-Hulk? I'd love to hear from you. Before I go, I want to give a shout out to Ominous Artist on Twitter, who made this amazing piece of fan art for us. Thank you so much, and thanks for the kind words too. We both really appreciate it. I also want to thank everybody for thinking about M right now, and for being so patient while she recovers. Hopefully she'll be back soon, but right now we just want to give her some time. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, you can like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone!